Why is a railway track like an iceberg? It can be cold at certain times of the year, but that's not it. It is because there is a lot more going on below the surface that you cannot see. You can see the sleepers, the rail, the top layer of ballast, as well as all the fastenings. But a lot of engineering has gone into what is occurring below all of this, and this is what we're going to be looking at in this video. Welcome to the P-Way Engineer, the YouTube channel where we cover all things railway engineering. A key part of building anything is getting the foundation right. The tall skyscrapers or long bridges around the world show that amazing things can be done, but they all rest on a solid foundation. A railway is no different. The area under the sleeper is commonly known as the track bed. Like a good dessert, it is made up of a number of layers, each bringing their own important characteristics to the party. Let's have a look at all the areas, then we can dive into each one at a time for some more detail. Directly below the sleepers, we have the ballast layer, commonly known as bottom ballast. This may include a sub-ballast layer within it. We then have the blanket layer, also known as the formation treatment. Then we have the subgrade, and finally the substrata. Why is the track bed design and performance so important? It's just stones, isn't it? As we have already said, the track bed is the foundation on which the track itself sits. A well-designed and maintained track bed performs well under load, moves elastically under that load within certain limits, and then returns to its original position after the load is removed. The track bed is a key part of the loading triangle that takes a very narrow, almost point load of the wheel sitting on the rail through the sleepers down into the track bed and across the subgrade. Importantly, it broadens it out evenly across the subgrade and the substrata. A common term you may come across when discussing track bed and its design is track modulus. This is a term used to describe the springiness of the ballast cushion under the sleepers. This is expressed in newtons per meter, but with the high values, it's more common to see it as meganewtons per meter squared. The more springy the ballast, the lower the track modulus, and the more the track will deflect when under load. As engineers don't want much deflection, a high track modulus is what's aimed for. Another key feature of the track bed is its role in draining away water. Water is one of the main enemies of railway track. Moving it away quickly and easily is important. The blanket and formation layers we'll discuss later are where this problem can be really addressed within the track bed design. So, let's look at these layers that make up the track bed design in more detail. Just a quick note before we jump into the ballast layer in detail. If you want to know more about the components that make up the railway, from the ballast all the way up to the rails, then you need my Track Components Guide eBook, detailing all the railway track components in detail. This guide is the perfect starting place for anyone looking to increase their railway knowledge. Grab yours at the link in the top right hand corner or in the description below. The ballast layer, which we'll call from now on the bottom ballast, known as such because it sits below the sleepers and is comprised of ballast stone. See why I want to call it bottom ballast? Ballast stone has a number of functions, primarily of which is supporting the sleepers and the rest of the track structure. It is also required to resist sleepers moving and allow water to pass through it. The depth of this layer, at least in the UK, is linked to the usage of the track it's supporting, determined through a relationship between the line speed and tonnage. The higher speed, higher tonnage lines are subjected to higher forces, so the bottom ballast layer is deeper, around 300 millimeters thick. Sidings, for example, are at the other end of the spectrum, with a lower speed, less frequent use, leading to lower forces. Ballast steps here can be a lot lower, sometimes down to the tens of millimetres. For a more in-depth look at the functions of ballast and the properties it needs to have, you need to look no further than my video, Why Ballast Stone is Essential for the Railways, its key functions explained. It's linked in the top right hand corner now and in the description below. Under the bottom ballast is the sub ballast. This can be a different size stone if required, but very often this is the same stone as the bottom ballast, so does not look like a distinct layer, and is just classed as part of the bottom ballast. This layer separates the main bottom ballast from the blanket and subgrade below. This is important to stop these layers being damaged or disrupted by activity such as tamping, which could lead to real issues within the track bed that are very costly to rectify. Before we delve into the next layer, we need to have a quick talk about crossfall. What is the crossfall? It's the slight slope installed in the track bed, but why is it there? For drainage. The crossfall helps direct the water that has drained through the ballast in a certain direction. It can be towards the edge of the track or towards a drainage system. The crossfall helps prevent accumulation of water in the track bed that can lead to so many issues. It's fair to say that it's at the blanket layer that things start to get really interesting, and you could argue that the engineering really kicks in. When it comes to the blanket layer, track engineers have a number of choices of what they can do. The option they choose is driven by factors such as the condition or makeup of the ground below, how effective the ground drains away water, the usage of the track, and any historic issues. This aim to resolve or preempt issues is maybe one reason why the blanket layer is more commonly known as the formation treatment. 
It is an engineering solution to address or prevent issues occurring within the track bed. So, what options are on the menu that track engineers can pick from? A traditional blanket was comprised of a sand or granular layer, normally around 100mm thick. This sand would help prevent the upward migration of fine particles into the bottom ballast, while allowing water down through. Sand has fallen slightly out of favour with engineers, largely due to the expense of including it. During renewal, it requires an additional stage of men and machines to install, plus additional train haulage to bring it to site, and both have a significant cost attached. It has been replaced, largely, by a range of geosynthetic and geomembrane blankets. These sheets are made from polyester and rolled out prior to putting the bottom ballast in. Different types can help address different issues, and are picked accordingly. They can help address separation between the layers, similar to sand blankets, reinforcement, filtration of moving water, normally upwards. They can be designed to assist with drainage or prevent corrosion. Lastly, they can help with load distribution. It is also common to see grids employed to help strengthen the track bed. This thin mesh-like layer is often added on top of the blanket after it's laid. Where the stability or track modulus is an issue, a capping layer can be used. This is a form of hard, impervious material that aims to improve the stability and track stiffness. This can take the form of a Type 1 sub-base material of crushed rocks or aggregate. Sometimes geocells are also used. Capping layers are not common and used sparingly where absolutely required due to the additional time and cost to install them. The subgrade could either be the naturally occurring ground material from the location or could be made ground that has been brought in. For example, in a cutting, it's likely to be the natural ground given that excavation has taken place to form the railway corridor, whereas on an embankment, it's going to be material brought to site to create the embankment. Then we have the substrata. This is the natural ground in the area. As touched on, this could be the same as the subgrade, or more properly, the subgrade could be one and the same as the substrata. The composition of this substrata will have a large bearing on the design of the blanket layer and the need for a capping layer. The stiffness of the ground, how it drains, and other factors are all key things that the track engineers need to look at when designing a track bed solution. So, there you have it, the different layers that make up the track bed. I hope this has shown you that there is indeed a lot of thought and design that goes into what is built below sleeper level and the importance of the decisions made during track bed design. If you want to know more about track alignment, why not sign up to my Horizontal Track Geometry Basics email course? What have you got to lose? It's free. Please do hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and check out some of my other videos linked on screen now.